Hey guys, it's James from Engineering Dads here and today I'm going to be taking you through the first installment of James Brewster. So essentially what we'll be making today is a detergent um, made from enzymes. Now, you might sit there and ask yourself, well, aren't these cheap from the store anyway to buy? And the answer is yes, you can get these for about $5, which is pretty cheap. However, doing this DIY is quite handy because it costs as little as $5 to make, right? It costs about $2 from Things like fruit scraps to ferment um, with some yeast and some brown sugar. It's a very, very handy project. Not only that, enzyme detergents are quite limited in the industry at the moment. One of the reasons being is when the enzyme detergent is made, the lead time it takes to arrive to your store and to your house, it's broken down the enzyme structure by that point. What that means is the enzyme activity is actually decreased. So over time, these things aren't as efficient as your chemical detergents. So DIY kind of overrides that because you're doing it from your home and you can use it quite instantaneously. Another benefit of doing this is if you're going to an urban area, for example, a farm, or you just want to make it for yourself. These things can last a long time. And another challenge is the amount of time it takes to build these things or to ferment. So it's about a four week fermentation time for this, which can be quite lengthy, but preparing it in advance before going away somewhere, whether it be a road trip around Australia or wherever you live, um, or going to an urban, uh, suburban location, or a rural location, I should say. Essentially, what an enzyme detergent is, uh, is mainly comprised of enzymes known as proteases and amylases. Essentially, what amylases do is they work by acting on large, big, starchy uh, molecules. So they break these guys down and therefore removing stains. So starchy like things would include things like your uh, potato stains and your soy stains. Then we move into proteases. I'll give you guys uh, about five seconds to guess what proteases act on. Now if you guessed uh, proteins you would be correct. The name kind of suggests it for itself. So a protease enzymes works on breaking down large protein-like structures. So things from, I guess, egg stains, milk stains, etc., and also casein stains. This is a process known as hydrolysis, where the enzymes act on the larger chain structures and break them down, therefore breaking down the stain. Now this has some great advantages in industry, right? So normal detergents, they're not the greatest for the environment, and they're also very dangerous to use, both in your household as well, that's why when you're using these household detergents that have things like PSA and peroxide in them, you do need to wear gloves because they are also quite corrosive and can be irritants to skin. Using enzymes negates this need altogether. So, in industry, this is also beneficial as it's sustainable and it's cheaper. So, there's less waste in the effluent of the plant that's producing the soap or the detergent, therefore taking the load off downstream water treatment plants and also the environment leading to less COD in the environment and less harmful substances. So I'll be taking you today how we're going to make one of these enzyme detergents. Now, the main steps in the main rule of thumb you want to know is about three parts of your food scraps or any other enzyme source, one part sugar and 10 parts water. So we'll be using one liter of water in a two liter bottle by a teaspoon of yeast to catalyze the reaction. So without further ado, let's get into the making process. Alrighty, so first we're going to start by adding our food scraps, fruit scraps into the bottle. Now mind you, for this I used orange scraps, lime scraps and lemon scraps. You can use anything. If you do a bit of research, you'll find things like kiwi fruit and grapefruit a very, very high concentration of proteases. These are just the most easiest at the time, having large amounts of stock in my house. So um, that's what I went for first. Now, first and foremost, whenever you're doing any fermentation process, it's highly recommended to always sanitize a product. So being someone who brews craft beer, I just use the sanitizer powder you get from your local brewery, uh, your local beer shop, or the supermarket, or if you want to be a bit easier, use some hand sanitizer, as long as it's pure ethanol, anything to kill the microorganisms inside of your fermentation apparatus, shake it up, and you're good to go. This just prevents any bacteria from getting in your final product. And me personally, don't want to have a high concentration of bacteria in my final uh, enzyme mixture. So 
This is more important if you're doing things like brewing ginger beer or brewing beer, because you really don't want to have those nasty microorganisms in the final product, because this can be quite dangerous to your health. Let's go. So I'm gonna use a funnel and I'm gonna break these into little smaller pieces here. All right, after your fruit scraps are in there, you're gonna to wanna to add your brown sugar. Now, for this video, I'm gonna be using some organic raw sugar. Brown sugar must be used, and I'm using organic under the notion that if I put good stuff in, I'm gonna get good stuff out. It's just one of the simple rules of life, in my opinion anyway. So we're gonna funnel that in. Now we're gonna add a liter of water, and the reason I'm adding only a liter to a two liter bottle not only is because that's the temperature of one part, but we need to leave some headspace. During the process, you're gonna be forming some CO2, and you're gonna to have to release the gas each day, which we'll get to in a sec. But this is why I recommend using a plastic bottle, as it's less uh, more rigid and you know, it's got more room to move around as the gas forms. Whereas with a glass, uh, there's more risk of explosion or implosion for example and the glass shattering due to excess pressure build up if you forget for a day to release the gas so like i said before the gas has more space to roam around plus it's kind of expandable um, so yeah we're just going to go ahead and add the water now Alrighty, after the water is added you're going to want to add your te teaspoon of yeast if you're using baker's yeast it's more than good enough for a process like this okay so once that's added, we're going to add our top one. Make sure this is very, very, very tight. It can be quite a smelly process. So if it's loose, it's not only are you going to be losing product as you go potentially, but it's also going to be smelling the location you're doing it in. So once we do that, we're going to shake it. Like we're making a cocktail almost. Okay, now once that's shaken up with the date mark, you're gonna to wanna to put it away. You're gonna to wanna to let it sit for four weeks for the fermentation, and we'll see you then. We're gonna compare it to a household detergent. All right guys, so the fermentation process is now finished. So here we have the enzyme detergent, and here we have a home brand detergent, Vanish, and we're gonna test both of them to see how well they work. So pretty simple, what I did was once the fermentation was done, Got the bottle, strained it into a big bowl and put it into this nice bottle. With your fruit scraps, you're gonna to wanna to leave them over. We're gonna make a nice little paste with that. That paste can be used on different appliances like your kitchen bench, your bathrooms, uh, etc. It can even be used for a facial scrub as well. Not that I'd recommend it. I don't know if it's gonna smell the best or if it's gonna feel the best, but it's up to you how you go about it. So we have two rags here. One is has a red pattern on it. And for coating sake, we're gonna use this one for the enzyme detergent. On the other one, we have a green coating which we're gonna use for the home brand stain remover. So I've got some tomato sauce and we're just gonna stain both of those. So stain both of those, rub them in, do what you want with it. So what we're gonna do is on each of them, we're gonna give that a spray like we're supposed to. Let the magic happen. So I've been soaking it for five minutes only. And this is the green one. As you can see, the sauce stain is still present. I don't really see that well. Anyway, <laughs> the enzyme one. The sauce stain is already gone. <laughs> so, yeah. It's only been five minutes soaking, so we're gonna let that sit for a bit longer and we're gonna see the final results. Booyah! So the washing's done. Is the stain removed, do you ask? Well. <laughs> As you can see, this is the normal household detergent and I'll mark out that the stain is still quite visible. So although it did an alright job at removing it, making it a bit uh, 
less light, less obvious. Didn't do as well as the, <coughs> the enzyme detergent spray. So, as we can see, there are some marks that were already on this rag before, but where the source was placed, it's no longer showing any obvious signs of source being there, which was around here where we placed it. Here we have some old marks on there though. I would have liked to have a nice clean rag, but do I look like I can do laundry? Probably not. So yeah, that was it guys. So if you want to do something like this, have fun with it. It is a nice fun little chemistry product you can do at home. Um, if you do a bit of homebrew or whatnot, it's also something really fun. Uh, I'll be doing a couple of more homebrew videos moving forward and coming very soon. So uh, one more tip as well, if you are going to do anything like this, um, when you bleed it every day, you notice the gas coming out. I mean, I've already said be careful, but uh, once the gas stops coming out, don't stop there. Give it another week. Just because the gas is done doesn't mean the fermentation process is done. The yeast will still be active. So leave it another week for your detergent to condition. I was about to say beer then because I think it's a uh, beer o'clock. So yeah. Oh shit. Shit, mom, mom, the end on detergent. Can you get it for me, please?